Hello, hello, and welcome to the podcast. Very pleased, very lucky today to have on Alex Howard Jones. So Alex is the Market Centre Director over at Keller Williams. Alex, thank you for making time in what I know is your very busy diary to join us today. Thank you for having me, Chris. Really excited to be on. So talk us through, first of all, what a day in the life as a Market Centre Director is. What, what does that entail? Is it onboarding new starters? Is it looking after the existing ones? Is it selling houses yourself? What does that, what does an average day look like for yourself at the moment? Oh, wow. So that is a pretty mixed bag. So very much like our agents, no day is the same. Uh, so generally speaking, it's a combination of speaking to people to explain what the self-employed model looks like, um, assessing whether they are the type of person that wants to set up their own real estate business, um, supporting our existing agents. We have a nice big market centre. There's approaching 80 agents within it. And I like to call us sort of the Robins to the Batmans in terms of being that second line of support and encouragement. Um, so those are the two sort of main priorities. Uh, I do dabble in a little bit of uh, property myself. Uh, so yesterday I was closing a deal based on the back of an open house I had on Sunday. So that was pretty exciting. Excellent. That's really, really good. So do you find that your, I won't say your job is getting easier, but certainly with regard to explaining the self-employed model, do you think as the years go by, you're finding it's a little bit easier to kind of be able to get their head around the self-employed model because they're kind of a bit more exposed to it now, as I'm sure sort of quite a while ago, it's kind of, you know, what's this self-employed malarkey all about? But now they're probably a bit more clued up. Do you find that's the case? Sort of. I would say that we're probably slight victims to the programmes like Selling Sunset, Buying London, which paint a really fantastic picture of sort of belonging to a brokerage or being a self-employed agent, um, but perhaps also maybe publicize the glamorous side of business ownership. So um, with, funny, funny to say, but when I have conversations with people about maybe joining Keller Williams or what they're going to do, I have to break some beliefs that probably are quite disappointing to some people. Yeah, absolutely. I, I remember when I used to um, sort of do uh, new franchisee vetting calls for the property franchise group. And I personally saw it as my goal to make the job sound as depressing as possible. And it would be like, you would be out door knocking <laughs> in winter, in the rain with half an umbrella sort of thing. And if they still came back after that and was like, yeah, I'm still up for it sort of thing, I thought, okay, well, you're made of the right stuff sort of thing. If if they didn't come back, then they were probably just looking for sort of more of the selling sunset lifestyle. Exactly that. And I really take it personally. I see it as a real moral responsibility of mine to spell out all the things that people may not have considered or they perhaps want to not think about. Yes, exactly. Like you say, it is leafleting. Your main job is lead generation. It is going to be a bit of a roller coaster. You're going to experience some really high highs and some really low lows. That's the nature of the beast. So um, without wanting to sound too negative, um, I think it's really important that people in my in my job role particularly make that abundantly clear to anybody that's looking to take that step. I guess it's a it's a duty of care from your sellings, isn't it? Because you can't be all sunshines and rainbows and be like, yeah, come on board, put a couple of things up on Facebook and you'll have a hundred grand by Christmas sort of thing. Yeah, there's a, a duty right. of care that you've got to go, actually, this is what it's going to be like on day one. This is what it's going to be like on day 100. And yes, you're going to have times where you might have a little bit of a cry in your car. That's completely normal sort of thing. But there's certainly a duty of care you've got to the people coming on board that this is reality. Yeah. And, you know, how could I sleep at night? I think the really important thing is that I follow up with my agents on a regular basis. They have weekly calls with me. So I can't even just be all sunshine and rainbows and then run away and hide because I am there with them throughout the whole thing. So they would just turn around and, and be like, Alex, what the hell? <laughs> What's this? Well, I, I guess that relates quite well to agents who are listening in who don't work in the sort of the um, agent onboarding space. Because obviously, if you take a vendor on board who you think, actually, this person's got a nice house, but it's a bit of a pain in the backside to be polite. You kind of think, actually, you've got a six month relationship with that person coming up, almost whether you like it or not sort of thing. So there are a pain in the backside to start off with. They're probably a pain in the backside later on. So you're doing your future self no favours in any way, shape or form, taking on that sort of, eh, I kind of need the stock. So I might as well just take it on sort of thing, sort of mentality. So I guess it's very similar for yourself with the guys that you bring on. 
Yeah, look, we're, we're pretty careful at oxygen. We're very frank and upright. So uh, up, up front, sorry. So if, you know, we feel that an agent maybe isn't cut out for this, we will gently suggest that perhaps they need a little bit more time to uh, train in a different space or discover the opportunity another way. Um, and equally, if it's not working out and we see an agent potentially walking themselves into trouble, we will be very upfront and say, is this actually what's good for you right now? With, with the, We're not shy to say that. Well, I think that's very good. I think you're doing your future self a favour there. So with, with mm. the, the agents you bring on board then, the ones that you know do well and the ones that do really well, what's the difference between those two groups of people, the ones that sort of really excel and launch their business and sort of you know really kind of stride ahead sort of thing compared to ones that may be slightly more plod, let's say? What, what are the differences between those mm. two groups of people? Uh, I would say a tenacious mindset and an action taker. Somebody that acts on at least one thing per day is going to get things done much more rapidly than someone that sits and procrastinates and worries about things. So uh, we always love to say done is better than perfect here. Uh, we're not going to churn out perfection all the time, but actually taking those steps is what truly matters. So I think when I'm speaking to people about um, onboarding at Keller Williams, uh, they will tend to already be using the kind of vocabulary that we use, or at least recognizing lead generation really comes first here. Um, and, and that's what makes my heart sing when I hear people like that. What are some of the biggest challenges that new agents face? And when I say new agents, I mean new to the self-employed world. What are the biggest challenges they face? If I was in a corporate estate agent for the last five years, for example, when I came and said, right, Alex, I'm looking to do it myself sort of thing. And what would be the biggest challenges I would face from a kind of a corporate background where sort of the business has been established for 100 years and you know lots of branches, et cetera, to then kind of going it alone? What's the biggest challenge you think I'll face on day one going forward? Um. I think there are two really key ones. I think firstly, obviously transitioning from being an agent to running your own business. It's very exciting, but it's also very overwhelming. You could be an excellent agent, but you may really lack some of the skills around working on your business and managing your business. So that's definitely something that people may need a lot of support with and should be looking to sort of leverage certain tasks to people who are better to do those jobs. Um, the second one I would say is a mindset shift. Um, we obviously, um, when we've been in a certain environment for, for a long period of time, start to take on certain beliefs about our fees, our value, what we do. And so particularly maybe when you look at a corporate style agency, an agent coming from there is, is focused on targets and numbers, but perhaps doesn't know how to convey their worth and their value proposition to a potential client because they've relied on just using size and strength. So they definitely have to do work on their value proposition and also realign sort of the level of service that they want to give in, in, in the self-employed model. I'm a big believer that some of the agents that do really, really well are the ones that sort of have that work ethic that comes with the corporate estate agent now, um, you know, the sort of shouting from the back of your office, you know, how many phone calls have you made today? How many appointments have you booked? How many um, you know, financial services appointments have you booked in today? That sort of, I wouldn't say negative stuff, but that sort of um, driven approach, let's call it. If you combine that then with the self-employed model, where actually you can provide that brilliant customer expectation and service kind of from start to finish, then for me, that sort of dynamite effect in most estate agency business. Would you think that's fair to say? Yeah, I think that's really fair to say. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having goals, tracking your numbers. In fact, it's positive. You know, it really helps you to hold yourself accountable. So I wouldn't say it's negative at all. Um, I just think that it's um, a case of switching it around a little bit to, to strike the right the right kind of balance, essentially. And do you think it's an uh, evolving mindset, I suppose, with the guys that come on board and start being self-employed from sort of being an estate agent to being the managing director of an estate agency. Do you reckon that's a shift in mindset and the ones that kind of get it go on to do really well and the ones that don't get it are still good estate agents, but they've just got no appointments in their diary? 
Yeah, like like I said to you, you know, you can be an excellent agent and really struggle on the business side of things. Um, you know, equally, there are some agents that will join the model who have been in businesses where they've only worked one small part of that whole role. And in that case, they really need to sort of work on educating themselves about how to upskill in all the other parts of the role, because typically when they start, they're not part of a team. They are uh, solo entrepreneurs. So let's say I came to you today and said, great, Alex, want to sign up yourself, want to work with Keller Williams, think you've got a great model, I want to launch my business. What's probably one of the first things you would look for me to do to generate my sort of first instruction or make my first sort of marketing push? Where, where would be kind of to see the lowest hanging fruit in my world from launching from a cold start? Well, we have a, a pretty uh, tried and tested onboarding plan, which utilizes our fantastic market center managers. So Emma and James uh, handle the onboarding for every single agent. And it's really a very handheld process for the first few weeks you know we will be on the phone with you daily just checking that you're um, taking steps forward and and doing our recommended sort of onboarding plan um, we also have a good chat about lead generation strategy at the same time as we build an agent's business plan uh, and so in that instance we tend to highlight three lead generation strategies that the agent enjoys is good at because we've got much more hope of them actually employing them if they do enjoy them and they are good at them and then we help break that lead generation um, strategy down into steps so um, I would say for anybody starting cold on the market properties that haven't sold up your low-hanging fruit is an ideal place to target um, a lot of my agents really like networking and belong to BNI and WIBN and sort of getting out there in their local community. And, and then really database number one, we help you with your database. So that is key to your business. It's the burning engine. We don't have a shop front. You need to use your database. So talk me through the database. So I've, I've been to lots of Keller Williams event and it's I wouldn't say it's always very focused, but there's always a common theme of database, manage your database, grow your database. So talk me through sort of the, the ethos and the mindset behind that. Okay, so um, when an agent onboards, when they start, we tend to say, uh, let's download your phone contacts into a spreadsheet and upload them into your database. And a lot of agents will say, oh, well, that's not particularly relevant because all my friends live in X, Y, and Z. Um, First of all, that is really relevant for us because we're part of the largest global real estate network in the world. So, um, you know, we can service clients anywhere. So really, there's opportunity anywhere. Um, we have our very own software called Nurture, which is uh, very sophisticated in terms of building campaigns that you can assign to your clients. And... Uh, if you build your database from the start and you do a really good job of that, it will do the heavy lifting for you year after year after year. So it becomes a piece of, of lead generation that you don't need to actually personally spend a lot of time on. And who would be on this database? Obviously, you, you kind of start off from a cold start, so it's your friends, it's your families, it's people you might know from the pub and whatever else it might be. Over time, is it primarily local businesses? Is it local homeowners? Is it everybody who has a certain postcode? Who would who would kind of be the number one people you'd want to get on that list? Well, I mean, obviously, number one people that you would love to get on that list would be local homeowners or landlords, for example. Um, but... If you utilize your database correctly and you keep communication consistent, you will uncover opportunities with people that you really did not expect to. So, you know, I would say don't be overly selective and don't overthink it when you're looking at who to add to your database. You know, a lot of agents find the most surprising cheerleaders in the most surprising places. Um, but definitely networking your local community and businesses is, is critical. I think I read a stat, I'm going to be very grey with regard to the figures here because I'm trying to test my memory from about a year ago. And it basically looked at most 
businesses and companies and worked up worked out how much each email address on their CRM system was worth to them for the sake of their business. So, and generally they worked out, it was an American thing, so it was in dollars. They worked out that for every email address you had on your CRM system, that was worth a dollar per month into your business. So if you had a thousand email addresses on your system, if you nurtured that correctly, that should bring you in a thousand dollars worth of income on a monthly basis. If you had 10,000, that'd be $10,000, et cetera. So it shows you sort of yeah. the real life value of growing that database and that sort of network in your um, CRM system. You can then sort of nurture going forward after that. Yeah, it's, it's no coincidence that the top performing agents in our market center all have large databases and they communicate with them consistently. It's, it's, it's a direct correlation. So that's my argument for the database. So let's say, for example, I found myself on a database. So I was a local homeowner or I was um, friends with one of the guys to start off with and they put me on the database. What would I receive from that as a sort of an average person? Because let's say, for example, you've got a database of a thousand people. I mean, you're not going to be speaking to those people every month. That's a full-time job in itself. But is it a regular email contact? Is there kind of WhatsApp linked into it? What's this, what sort of the journey look like for anyone who falls on that database? It's down to the agent to design what sort of journey they want to set a client on. Uh, right from the outset, you have the ability to tag your contacts. So I might meet you, Chris, and decide to put you on a slightly different journey to somebody else. And I've already got these campaigns uh, built and created. That was part of my whole onboarding with James and Emma. So um, it, it's the, the agent can tailor this to how they suit, but it can be a WhatsApp message, it can be an email. Um, it can trigger emails to your inbox as the agent to then pick up the phone and dial the person. Um, you can include anniversary campaigns. There's there's so much you could do with it. I could waste hours of, of your life right now telling you about it. Um, but you know, my advice to all agents is come from a place of service. Don't boast um about what you do or what sort of cut of the pie chart you've got in your local market necessarily always think this has to add value in some way to the person that's receiving it and i feel like you can't go wrong if you're in that mindset and i mean you've also been talking to christopher watkins too much if you're talking about pie charts but um i feel that certainly the the database is an asset for your business in itself so, you know, let's say, for example, you wanted to walk away and sell your business and you went, actually, but I've got a database of 10,000 local homeowners in a local area. And that's going to carry a lot of weight rather than my database is six people and their dogs that I've sold over the last six months or so. So there's certainly there's mm -hmm. growing, ongoing asset. And if the market did have a an upturn, that's great. You've got a bigger database, you can contact them and get more from it. But also if it has a downturn yeah. as well. You've got an easy point of access to those people. Yes. And the, the other thing I would love to add in here is... Um, Agents are very people orientated typically and can remember a good amount of information in their heads. Um, don't leave your database in the Rolodex in your head because, you know, st strategically speaking, if you are thinking a uh, bigger picture to grow out a team, your team don't necessarily know those people. You need to keep good notes on everybody. So, you know, don't rely on keeping your database in your head. I can throw myself under the bus here. So um, I've gone from a one-person band to a three-person team at the moment. Um, and for the first year, my database was um, somewhat patchy, should we say, um, because I would update it when I remembered and obviously got lots of video calls and lots of stuff going on. I'd come back from meetings. And it's the last thing I want to do is update a spreadsheet. Um, I've now brought on teams around me and they're like, who's this person? Who's that person? Says you had a video call six months ago with them. What happened after that? And I'm like, oh, just made myself so much more work by not thinking in a head that I would be a bigger business and that the CRM system is going to be a really important part of that. So don't do what I did. And actually, when you've got a CRM system, put all the notes on the system because it won't be you forever and you need to share your knowledge as much as you possibly can do. Yes, make your life easy. And that's such a, a very sort of typical thing to do. We're all humans. So uh, yeah, you don't have to throw yourself under the bus, but benefit of experience, you're like, oh yeah, start as if you are a company. Have procedures in place. So, you know, one of my agents, Ugo, she says, if you do something more than once, have a procedure for it. Mm -hmm. I love that. And um, the little top tip that I would recommend, I've literally done one of these this morning, so I'd recommend it, is that any time you want to 
get someone to do something for you so that's where my new starters when they're looking to do various jobs in the business sort of thing i will just do a, a zoom recording like this i'll press record i'll do the doing right you add this person on here you click here you send this email out etc press stop recording upload it into a, a google document or a google drive and that is basically becoming your new starter course and it doesn't really take you any extra time because you're going to do the job anyway you just press record on a video call while you're doing it and you can just add that over time to eventually when you get new starters coming on board got any questions probably in the folder there's probably a video on it already and if there isn't a video on it let me know I'll record one put it in there so that's a really easy way of kind of growing that sort of ongoing uh, collateral for your business to help you when they come on board without actually having to sit down and write a new starter guide which is super super boring yeah it's going to take you hours I think it's all about strong foundations and you know the temptation as agents we're all naturally quite creative and you know um fast paced people maybe and uh, we don't care much for the setup. Uh, but I think, you know, if you can get assistance in that or you can really be disciplined with yourself, you're going to set yourself up for success. So one thing I've noticed with Keller Williams, especially, is there's a really good community. So I've been to a couple of market centers now. Everyone loves each other. Hugs, kisses. Hi, how are you? How's things been going? Estate agency can be a lonely world sometimes when you're on your own and you get your phone calls saying you've not been instructed on a property, etc. How important is it yeah. to have that community around estate agents as they grow their own businesses? It, it's so important. It's important for anybody growing their own business. But you're right. I think agency can be lonely if you're coming from um an experience where maybe you've been in corporate or high street, you may feel more used to. Um, anti-collaboration and uh, regarding anybody that's uh, sort of in competition with you as competition. Um, and one of the really refreshing things about Keller Williams is the level of collaboration that we uh, really strive to, to sort of nurture. Um, I still get quite a few funny looks and suspicious questions from maybe other agents when I reach out to them and say, hey, do you want to do something here? Do you want to meet for a coffee? Do you want to have a chat? Do you want to come to a market centre day? Um, they really think that there's a gender behind it sometimes. And it's like, there's really no agenda. We really all want to lift up the industry in the UK and just show our clients how good it really can be. Because I think there's a pretty... Uh, low bar right now do you think that collaboration side of things is getting easier because i know when i first started in the state agency i was it was ingrained into me bred into me dialed into me every single day we hate the competition and we are the best estate agent in town this is what we do they're rubbish we're awesome let's keep going with that sort of thing and that was ingrained in me for years and years and years and years but now it seems there's more of a direction of people working together, a bit more collaboration. I think it's very early days, don't get me wrong. Um, do you think that's getting a, an easier path for agents to kind of start working together without that suspicion of what do you want? I think so. And I think it's our job as people who promote collaboration to educate other agents so as to say, well, look, this is how you benefit from, you know, coming and having a coffee with me. I've got something that I want to share with you. I'm going to tell you how I just managed to do X, Y, and Z. Um, what I find really interesting is just in the last couple of months, I've noticed maybe more high street agencies actually introducing much more informal walkthrough tours with their sales managers, et cetera, on, on their property listings. So you can see that they are looking at what, everybody is doing now and thinking hmm maybe we have to just adapt a little bit and and perhaps the collaboration will come off the back of that too is it um is it gandhi who said be the change you want to be in the world so if you want to if, if people want to be working in a world with estate agents who collaborate start collaborating yourself with other estate agents and if by magic they'll start collaborating with you and as if by magic everyone is collaborating at the end of it so there we go uh, wrapping up with a gandhi quote i mean who would have seen that one coming um alex thank you so much for coming on today you've been a brilliant guest thank you so much really appreciate it thank you for having me